Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the nuclear model of atomic structure. You should then be able to describe how the nuclear model was modified by the discoveries of electron energy levels, the proton and the neutron. In the last video we saw that an early model of atomic structure was called the plum pudding model. However, the results of the alpha scattering experiment led to the plum pudding model being replaced by the nuclear model of atomic structure. In the nuclear model, most of an atom is simply empty space. In the centre, we have a positive nucleus, which contains most of the mass of the atom. And around the edge, we find negative electrons. Now, we know that the nuclear model is correct. However, in the years following the nuclear model, further discoveries were made. These discoveries caused the nuclear model to be modified. So let's look at these now. Now we've already said that the electrons are found at the edge of the atom. The scientist Niels Bohr proposed that electrons orbit the nucleus at specific distances, rather than just in a general area. This idea was based on calculations that Bohr had carried out. Bohr's proposal was accepted because it agreed with the results of experiments by other scientists. We now call the orbits energy levels or shells. Several years later, scientists found that the positive charge in the nucleus is due to tiny positive particles, which they called protons. For example, an atom of hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus, whereas an atom of helium has two protons. The number of protons determines the amount of positive charge in the nucleus. Around 20 years after the nuclear model was first proposed, the scientist James Chadwick made a final important discovery. Chadwick discovered that the nucleus also contains neutral particles, which he called neutrons. So here's the final version of the nuclear model, with the neutrons in the nucleus. Now you need to know the sizes of the different parts of an atom, so let's look at those now. Firstly, the radius of an atom is around 0.1 nanometers. This is also written as 1 times 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. Now, some atoms are larger than others, so this is an approximate figure. The radius of the nucleus is approximately 1 times 10 to the power of minus 14 meters. So the radius of the nucleus is less than 1 ten thousandth the radius of the atom. However, Nearly all the mass of the atom is found in the nucleus. We're going to look now at the relative charges and relative masses of protons, neutrons and electrons. This often comes up in exams, so you need to learn this. The words relative charge mean the charge of one particle compared to another particle. Protons have a relative charge of positive 1. Neutrons are neutral, so they have a relative charge of 0 and electrons have a relative charge of negative 1. I'm showing you here the structure of the element helium, and this brings us to a key fact about atoms. Atoms have no overall charge. That's because the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons. This means that the positive charges on the protons are cancelled by the negative charges on the electrons. Now, the relative mass means the mass of one particle compared to another particle. Both protons and neutrons have a relative mass of 1. This means that protons and neutrons have the same mass. Electrons have a much smaller relative mass than either protons or neutrons. You don't need to know the exact relative mass of an electron, but you can say very small in the exam. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.